Remember when phones in class were the enemy? Well, get ready for this plot twist. They might actually save education. With math scores hitting rock bottom and students checking out mentally, some genius finally asked, what if we stopped fighting the digital world and started learning from it? Spoiler alert, the results are kind of blowing my mind. Hey there, my curious knowledge seekers, Theodore here, and today we're diving into the wild world of modern education. You know that moment when you realize everything you thought you knew is completely wrong? Yeah, that's what's happening in schools right now. We've got brilliant humans here to break down how education is getting its glow up, from TikTok transformations to figuring out what skills kids actually need in this crazy AI world we're building. Trust me. This is not your standard education is broken story. It's way more interesting than that. Hey everybody and welcome to another deep dive. You know, something that I just keep thinking about is education. Okay. It feels like with all this new technology popping up literally every single day, uh -huh. that all the old rules about what kids should be learning and like even what they should major in in college. It's just like out the window. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how can we even prepare them for jobs that don't exist yet? Yeah. You're not alone. Seriously. And feeling that way, a lot of parents and teachers are having those same anxieties. It really is like prepping them for a world that hasn't even been invented yet. Mm. But luckily, I think you've pulled some really cool sources. Yeah. That should help us figure this all out. Absolutely. So we've got reports on kind of like the state of U.S. education right now. And then we've got these articles that talk about the challenges. Right. And even like potential solutions. Yeah. And it's interesting because when you look at everything, it seems like okay. the pandemic was kind of a big turning point. But it also like accelerated a lot of these trends that were already happening. Okay. So let's jump right in. Yeah. So one of the things that really stood out to me in this 2024 current state of U.S. education report. Okay. Was that. Eighth grade math proficiency has dropped to only 26 percent. Oh, wow. I mean, that is crazy low. Yeah. And to put that in perspective, just a couple of years ago, it was at 34 percent. Yeah, it is a big drop. I mean, that's a huge E drop. It is a significant decline. And research actually suggests that by 2030, oh, God. less than 20 percent of eighth graders could be proficient in math. OK, let me put this in perspective. Imagine if elevators only worked 26% of the time. We'd all be taking the stairs. That's basically what's happening with math education right now. We're failing our future engineers, scientists, and problem solvers. And in a world run by algorithms, that's not just a problem. It's a crisis waiting to happen. Oh, my goodness. And this is a serious issue because math is crucial in, like, so many fields, especially with technology growing as fast as it is. That's a really scary thought. Yeah. And it's not just math, right? Right. Reading scores are also down. Yeah. Although I don't think quite as bad. Right. Reading scores have dipped, but not as dramatically. Okay. However, the thing that's really alarming is that these learning setbacks seem to be hitting certain groups of students harder than others. The alarming state of the American student in 2022 highlighted this and pointed out yeah. that the pandemic has only widened the achievement gap. So we were already dealing with like an unequal playing field. Yes. And then the pandemic just came along and made it a million times worse. Unfortunately, that's the case. Ugh. Which means that we can't just focus on pandemic recovery. Right. We have to tackle the systemic issues that are causing the achievement gap in the first place. Right. We have to fix the whole system. If we want an education system that works for everybody. Absolutely. And it seems like the public is starting to catch on to all this. Yeah. So this Pew Research Center survey called about half of Americans say public K-12 education is going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Found that a majority of Americans are, like, not happy with public education right now. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And it's not just parents, you know? Really? The growing discontent with American education reported that a staggering 87% of K-12 students don't give their schools an A for making learning exciting. So it seems like everybody feels this disconnect between what's being taught in schools right. and what's actually needed to succeed in the real world. It's like they're all saying, hey, what you're teaching us isn't useful anymore. Yeah. And honestly, can you blame them? 
they're growing up in a world where they can just Google anything. Right. And then they go to school and it's like watching paint dry. It's a valid point, and especially with all this new technology like AI. Oh, yeah. It seems like all the skills we used to think were essential right. might not even be enough to prepare students for jobs that don't even exist yet. So it's like, what's the point? What should we be teaching them? Yeah. I mean, what are the biggest challenges facing American education today? Well, it seems like we've got a few things all happening at the same time. Okay. A serious teacher shortage, yeah. not enough money for schools, Right. and this constant struggle to keep students engaged in a world of like TikTok and everything exactly okay so let's break all that down okay starting with this teacher shortage yeah so a look at american education issues today it says that there's been a 69 percent increase in hiring underqualified teachers what just between 2022 and 2023 oh wow I mean, that is a huge each jump. Massive, yeah. And that's not even the real problem. Right. It's a symptom of a much larger problem. Okay. Low salaries, burnout, and all these increasing demands are driving good teachers out of the profession. Yeah. Leaving schools desperately trying to fill these empty positions. And they're just like taking anybody at this point. And a lot of times these new hires just don't have the right training right. or experience. And so then it just like creates this vicious cycle. Exactly. Fewer qualified teachers, mm -hmm. bigger class sizes, less attention for each kid. Right. And then students just aren't getting the support they need. And then they fall behind. Ugh. It's just so sad. And to make things even worse, you know? Yeah. Schools just don't have enough money. Right. This was in a bunch of the sources. Yeah. A lack of funding means a lack of resources. Okay. Outdated textbooks. Yeah. Not enough money for professional development. So it's like we're setting them up to fail. Uh -huh. And then we're like surprised when the students don't do well. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? Just like throw money at the problem. Well, increased funding would definitely help, mm. but it's not the whole solution. Okay. We need to fix the reasons why teachers are leaving. Okay. You know, we need to make it a better work environment. So it's not just about the money. It's about making teachers feel valued. Exactly. Okay. I like that. We need to support them. Absolutely. But what about keeping students engaged? Yeah. Like how do you compete with a smartphone? Right. That's the million dollar question. Like, seriously. Kids these days are growing up with technology. It's all they know. They've got smartphones or on social media. All day. And compared to that sitting in a classroom. Right. It can just feel incredibly boring. Yeah. So how do we make education more like their digital world? That's what we're going to talk about next. Okay. The good news is there's some really cool things happening in education. Okay, good. Because... This is getting a little depressing. I know, but there's some really innovative solutions out there that could change everything. I am so ready. Here's the thing about fighting technology in schools. It's like trying to teach fish to stay dry. These kids were born digital natives. Their brains are literally wired differently than ours. So maybe instead of swimming upstream, we should be riding this wave. I mean, if TikTok can teach me to make perfect pasta in 30 seconds, imagine what it could do for algebra. Let's talk about those solutions. Okay. So how do we fix this? Yeah. What can we even do? Well, the good news is we don't have to, like, start from scratch. Oh, thank goodness. There's actually a lot of cool things already happening that could really change things. Give me some hope here. Okay. So first of all, technology doesn't have to be the enemy. Right. A uh, look at American education issues today actually says that technology can be a really powerful tool for good. OK, but how? But they also say that teachers need the right training and support. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. You can't just like give a teacher an iPad and expect them to suddenly be amazing. Right. It's like giving someone a fancy camera. Yeah. But not teaching them how to use it. You might get some lucky shots. Yeah. But you're not going to get anything great. Exactly. Teachers need to know how to use technology effectively. Right. So they need to be able to create engaging lessons and actually use it to teach. Exactly. And they need to know how to use it to personalize instruction. Okay. And to track how the students are doing. So professional development for teachers is like really important. Yes, absolutely. Okay. What else? Well, one of the most exciting trends is personalized learning. Okay. So imagine a classroom where every student is getting a lesson tailored to their specific needs. Okay. I've heard about this. Yeah. But isn't that like a logistical nightmare? It can be a challenge. Yeah. But a lot of our sources say that this is a key part of an effective education system. Yeah. And technology can actually help with this. Oh, really? Yeah. Think about those apps and programs that can adjust to each student's pace and learning style. 
So it's not like one size fits all. No. It's like custom made for every kid. Exactly. It's about recognizing that different students learn in different ways. I love that. Some kids learn best in groups. Some prefer to work alone. Right. Some like visual aids. Some need to actually do things with their hands. So personalized learning is about making sure every student can succeed. Exactly. I love that. What about remote learning? Oh, yeah. Is that here to stay? I think so. It definitely became more popular during the pandemic. Yeah. And it gives students a lot of flexibility. Okay. It can be really good for students in rural areas or those who can't physically attend school. But I feel like it doesn't work for everybody. Right. Not all students thrive in a remote environment. And what about kids who don't have computers or good internet access? That's another big challenge. Yeah. And speaking of challenges, okay. the alarming state of the American student in 2022 also talks about how important it is yeah. to focus on students' mental health. Oh my gosh, yes. The <laughs> pandemic was so hard on everyone, Yeah. but especially kids. They were isolated, they were stressed, their routines were completely disrupted. Yeah, a lot of them lost people they loved. Yeah, exactly, and we're seeing the effects of that now. Right. A lot more anxiety and depression among students. And that's something we can't ignore. Absolutely. We have to make sure that schools are places yeah. where kids feel safe and supported. Where they can connect with other people. Right. Schools can't just be about academics anymore. It's about the whole child. Exactly. And that's where community involvement is so important. Or the alarming state of the American student in 2022 suggests that schools, families, and communities need to work together okay. to create a good support system for students. So it really does take a village. Yeah. Parents, teachers community leaders, everyone needs to be involved. Like that. And then the final piece of the puzzle is data-driven decision-making. Okay, explain that to me. Basically, it's about using data and research okay. to figure out what the challenges are right. and what solutions actually work. So not just going with our gut feeling. No, or doing what's always been done. We need to be smarter about it. Exactly. We need to look at the data to see how students are doing right? and to figure out where they need extra support. And then we can use that information to make better decisions. Exactly. So we're not just guessing. Right. It's about being strategic. Yes. And targeted in our approach. Okay. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about all this. Me too. There are a lot of challenges, yeah. but there are also a lot of opportunities. Right. We can make education better. Yes. This is a time of big change. Yeah. Which can be scary, yeah. but it can also be exciting. Yeah. The key is to be open to new ideas. Okay. And to put the needs of our students first. Yes. And to use data to guide our decisions. I feel like I'm actually learning something here. Me too. This is good stuff. So we talked about the problems and some possible solutions, but yeah. what does this all mean for my kid's future? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool to talk about all this new stuff and data and everything, yeah. but like what actual skills are kids going to need to make it in a world that feels like it's changing every five seconds? I think that's the question everyone wants the answer to. Right. Like, what should we be teaching them? And honestly, yeah. nobody can predict the future. Uh, but we do know that there are certain skills that are always going to be important. Okay. So like what? Well, critical thinking, for example. Okay. Being able to look at information and decide what's true and what's not. Right. Especially with all the fake news and everything. Exactly. And being able to solve problems in creative ways. Like thinking outside the box. Yeah, these are skills you can use in any job. That makes sense. And then there's adaptability. Ugh. Because the world is changing so fast, mm -hmm. you need to be able to learn new things quickly and be okay with change. So being flexible is super important. Absolutely, no matter what career you choose. Okay, what else? Resilience. Okay. Because everybody makes mistakes and faces challenges. We have to fail sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, but it's about how you handle those failures. Pick yourself back up and try again. Exactly. It's about learning from your mistakes and keeping going. It's like a muscle you have to keep working out. Yeah, and parents and teachers need to show kids how to do that. Right. So don't be afraid to let your kids see you mess up sometime. Exactly. Because yeah. it's normal. That's how you learn. Exactly. And then there's creativity and innovation. Ooh. I like those. These are the skills that will help us solve big problems in the future. So we should be encouraging kids to be curious and come up with new ideas. Yes, in every part of their lives. Not just like art class. Right. It's about thinking differently and trying new things. And pushing the limits. Exactly. It feels like we need a whole new way of teaching kids. I think you're right. Not just memorizing facts and taking tests. We need kids to love learning. Right. To be excited about trying new things. Yeah, to always be curious. I like that. We need to teach them how to keep learning throughout their lives. Because the world is never going to stop changing. Exactly.
I feel a lot better now after this deep dive. Me too. I actually feel like I have some ideas about how to help my kid. That's great. And he, even though the future is uncertain, yeah, I feel more prepared to face it. It's all about being prepared. Thanks for all this amazing info. I feel like I learned so much. Of course, that was my pleasure. So to all our listeners out there, yeah, remember, you're not alone in this. We're all figuring this out together. Keep asking questions. Yeah. And never stop learning. Exactly. Thanks for listening, everyone. My wonderful wisdom seekers, we've just seen how education is finally catching up to the 21st century. Better late than never, right? Whether you're a parent worried about your kid's future, a teacher trying to compete with TikTok, or just someone who cares about where education is headed, remember, the best learning doesn't always look like traditional teaching. Sometimes it looks like a teenager making a viral video about photosynthesis. Keep questioning, keep adapting. And hey, maybe download that educational app you've been skeptical about. This is Theodore, signing off and heading down another YouTube rabbit hole, for educational purposes, of course. Mm -hmm.